known Singapore major. My name is TJ, and I am joined by Patra. Hello. It's been a long day so <laughs> far. Uh, yesterday, we had a lot of 3-0s and 3-1s, and today, we've been through two matches in three hours. So a lot of control decks still remaining left in the tournament. Were you expecting so much Murloc Paladin coming into this? Yeah, there there are a lot. Yeah. <laughs> There's a... Uh, um, yeah. I Did think you have one in the last one? Yeah, there was a Murloc Paladin. Yeah, uh, Chong or yeah, Chonger uh, played the Murloc Paladin, and uh, won. He's won like we've seen Murloc Paladin win two games so far today, and we saw it win what like zero games so far over the course of yesterday. So it's having a lot more success. And uh, next matchup, of course, you can see it on your screen: Handsome Guy versus Shiny Pants. <laughs> you love that name. Yes, I do. His pants aren't even shiny. <laughs> I saw him today, and I went up to him, and I said, you're a liar. And he gave me a very confused and hurt look. And I said, your pants aren't even shiny. So Handsome Guy is our last Korean in the tournament? Is he? Uh, yeah, Kranich sure. has been eliminated. So um, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Looks like it. So we're, we're, starting, to, we're starting to narrow it down now. I think we're... We're down to just 12 players. I think we played a couple of off-stream uh, lower bracket matches. Uh, we'll update you guys on that later. But uh, uh, So we're down to just 12 players. We're getting really close. Yeah. Uh, five more matches, I believe, uh, we're going to have today, and, and we're going to crown a champion at the end of the day. So uh, players looks like they're selecting their decks. Uh, mage banned away from Handsome Guy. That was the Freeze Mage that we saw yesterday. So the Freeze Mage is banned, and Handsome Guy bans the Warrior. Yeah. A little bit interesting. Some mind games going on with the bands there, maybe. Uh, Shiny Pants realizes that his lineup was really uh, weak to uh, Freeze Mage. And Handsome Guy, expecting the Freeze Mage ban, ban the Warrior away. Just to make that, uh, just to sort of ignore that matchup. So Secret Paladin versus Patron Warrior. Gotta start off with the Secret Pally. Yeah. Such a strong deck. It's good again. It's pretty much anything. Patron Warrior is also really strong, though, especially against Secret Paladin. That's true. A lot of times with Secret Paladin, uh, if your board is removed once, then you you pretty much get you know knocked out of the game because you, it's really hard for you to build up your board over and over again. Unless you got Redemption. Unless you have Redemption, <laughs> uh, the secrets do make it tough. Uh, or if you have a sick curve early on. And you on. know that um, Avenge triggers like af after Redemption? Some actually, it does, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like sometimes it's really hard to get rid of the minions of Secret Pally. Yeah. You can build a big board of patrons. Sometimes that's enough. Because then you can just pretty much just have infinite value from them. But... When you're playing against a Secret Paladin and they play a Secret Keeper on turn one and they still have the coin, they're always afraid to play anything into it. But Armorsmith would survive even if both Secrets are played. And he does have to slam the next turn. It, it's a matter of whether or not Handsome Guy wants to remove the Secret Keeper this turn mm -hmm. and give up the draw potential of the slam. Do you play a lot of Patron? I play a whole heck of a lot of Warrior in general. So you must have a lot of experience with Patron against I do. Secret Pally. Yes. <laughs> that is true because there's way too much Secret Pally on the ladder. <laughs> All right. Well, Handsome Guy called his bluff. Said, I don't think you have a secret. <laughs> and he didn't. That armor smith is going to stack on some armor. Potentially can build up the Frothing Berserker. So the 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 thought process here is whether or not you play the Frothing Berserker and put on the threat, or if you battle rage for two cards and not really deal with the board in, in any fashion. And this attack means that he's, he's going to battle rage. Yeah, with Patron you always want more draw and having a lot of options. Yeah, with combo decks in general, I think that's. Rather true. I, I think of Patron Warrior as sort of a combo deck. But its combo is not to win. It's to win the board. Uh, that's why it, it doesn't really have many win conditions against heavy control decks that run lots of AoE, like Handlock and Control Priest. But it's the reason why it does so well against other decks that require a board, like Secret Paladin, like Zoo Warlock. 
Yeah, because the secret pally can't really deal with all the mi the patrons yeah. once they're out. Yeah. Like even a consecration sometimes is just not good enough. Sometimes it even spawns more patrons. <laughs> yeah. Which is not what you want to do. Sometimes it's what you want to do. If you have a full board of patrons, you can play consecrate and it won't spawn more. But most likely you won't remove all of them anyway. Yeah, and um, secret pallies don't really always run consecration anyways. Yeah. Sometimes it's a one up, but yeah, you're right. Sometimes there's none. So uh, a bit of an awkward turn here for Handsome Guy. He can't fit his curve very nicely unless he uses Execute, but you don't really want to use Execute on a Divine Shielded Haunted Creeper. It's annoying, but it's not that annoying. So just playing Acolyte of Pain seems reasonable. Yeah, seems to be his only choice, and of course, more card draw once again. Finally, the first secret comes out. <laughs> but do you even want to play the secret here? Hmm. Well... With Muster... Muster for battle and competitive spirit, he could kill off the Acolyte of Pain, and... Let me think. He, he would have to give him two draws, and then play the Muster for battle and competitive spirit. You want to cash in on the two damage from the Cog Hammer before you override it with a Life's Justice. Yeah, and he probably will be ignoring the Acolyte, maybe, then. It, gets he it would get heavily punished by just a single Whirlwind. But sometimes you just got to take that risk. Because he it would have to be just a natural Whirlwind, because he doesn't have a Despite equipped. And I I'd imagine last turn, since it was turn four, and he's got, you know, some um, you know one health creatures on the board... Oh wow, so he's going to sort of take a half measure here. Because you, you wouldn't expect Whirlwind to come anyway next turn because you can't combine Whirlwind with Patron on turn 5. Yeah, uh, it depends if, if he expected it to be Competitive Spirit or not, but I, I think if you're going to go halfway there, you might as well go all the way with the Mustard for Battle. But Shiny Pants being conservative with his lines of play, and it turns out to be the right call because... The natural whirlwind is drawn from Handsome Guy. He would have punished that play. Well, yeah, then, then yeah, that worked. That worked out well for him. So maybe we're just gonna see the low thub here being dropped down. Low thub's actually good for a few reasons. Um, one is just the strongest body that he can play, and two. He knows that Handsome Guy has the coin, and he's been holding on to it. And uh, usually the, the strongest play that Secret Paladins can make on turn 5 is coining out the Mysterious Challenger, so this would block that. Ooh. Rag. That's going to be handy for later. Yeah, if there even is a later. <laughs> Shiny Pants is going to put on some pressure here. So Handsome Guy didn't pick up any weapons at all yet? Nope, none. Could really use a death bite right about now. Especially with double patron. And a Dread Corsair as well, so he's got a lot of synergy cards. I don't really know if there's Alright, there the choices here are just playing Sludge Belcher or attacking in with the Cog Hammer and using the Cog Hammer again. But it really is doesn't matter unless it goes on the secret keeper. So Sludge Belcher just seems like a, a better option. And he ch he's choosing to just ignore the Lothab here. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it's pretty good. For justice. Oh. oh. Okay. The preemptive attack. Uh, I think this is pretty smart just because y you know you want to get rid of that weapon durability and you're probably going to attack into it next turn anyway. This just means like... Um, you can use that weapon attack next turn to hit something else instead of the Lothab by preemptively doing it. The two damage to face right now doesn't matter. It's inconsequential. Yeah, that was, that was interesting. Yeah, and he does, you're right, he does have two weapons in his hand. No mysterious challenger, though. So this patron looks kind of different compared to, like, maybe Waning Moon's patron warrior that we saw earlier with two court crons? Yeah, uh, usually you have to make the decision whether or not you run Paladin Shredders or Corcrons. 
I wonder if ha uh, if handsome guys has a Doctor Boom. Probably. It, it, yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe not. I don't want to say probably because we haven't seen the whole deck yet. But I feel like that Doctor Boom is pretty common. Wow, a, a <laughs> really nice board clear from Handsome Guy. A nice spot there. And Shiny Pants. This is probably going to be the turn for the muster for battle, I'd imagine. I don't see any reason to use... Well, there is a reason to use the Cog Hammer, but muster for battle just seems like right after a whirlwind, this is going to be the best time to use it. So you're thinking muster... And just a hero power here. Yeah. Because there's no reason also to override the muster for battle, the lights justice with cog hammer, because you're going to kill the uh, Lotha with one damage anyway. Yeah. Another option would be to blessing of kings, and then coin out the cog hammer, but that is susceptible to second execute, and it also means you have to use the coin with two uh, eight drops. Uh, eight mana cards in your hand, which is n not that great. So uh, I like this play a lot better. Oh, okay. Doesn't want to take the five damage. Yeah. yeah that's interesting. Maybe the difference between 23 health and 18 health at this stage is not that big. Or, yeah, it's... it's yeah, I guess five damage. Lothar told me yesterday five damage is... Always a lot because it's. Yeah, and sometimes um, the backup of the patron warrior is to smork with, you know, Girl Mash and yeah. Corcrons. Or you can pick up Steady Shot with Sir Finley Mergleton. <laughs> it's also an option. That's true, yeah. Some patrons do run that. Just And Handsome Guys has the Sir Finley right there. Yeah. But they usually try and get the, the ping, the mage power. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, or. Um, life tap. But ping is almost always the go-to. Sometimes steady shot if you really need to close out the game quickly. But that's pretty rare. And he's going to play the filling this turn. Especially with double patient in his hand. Picking up the ping would be pretty big deal here. And he gets it. <laughs> what else is he going to play? He's going to play something else. Yeah, the shredder. Yeah, forgoes the Sludge Belcher for now because wants to make sure that he starts removing these 1-1s one -ones as best he can. But now, here we go. Which 8-drop do you go with? Uh, most likely Tyrion. Yeah, Tyrion is the best option here. Because the Ragnaros, uh, it's not going to do much. If it hits the Finley, that's, n that's no fun. Yeah. Mm. No fun at all. <laughs> it's fun for Handsome Guy. Because that gives him a chance to come back in the game, but handsome guy needs to find a way to to draw into his spells. He used the battle rage early on for uh, two cards, and he used the slam for no card. And right now he's got all minions, which is not what you want to have as the patron warrior, especially against this deck, because your minions overall are lower quality than the secret paladins, because their deck is built around curving out with strong stuff. Your deck is built around. Um, you know, comboing your, your minions together to have a powerful effect. So, uh, Dr. Boom's a good pickup. Definitely. Because he doesn't have anything right now that could actually trigger his patron warriors. Except for ping. But that's really not a, like, a legitimate way. <laughs> Whoa, Vitality <laughs> Totem. Ah, uh, that's... Good for the heal, but it doesn't really help him right now. Shiny Pants is like, I can have one of those, too. Here's my Dr. Boom. Yeah. And he can actually make it so it's a 50-50 to hit the Dr. Boom or the uh, or the face. If Shiny Pants wanted to go for the rag this turn, he could uh, attack into one of the Boom Bots with his 1-1 uh, first, uh, then attack into the Vitality Totem with the Tyrion, and then attack into the last Boom Bot with his weapon. Play the rag and it'd be a 50-50. There would be no chance for your Tyrion to die from the boom bots uh, before you got this, the hit off on the Vitality Totem. So I like the Doctor Boom here. Right, like mm. patrons aren't out yet. Yeah. He could just like 
keep building his board. And avenge. Yeah. Also allows you to push out that avenge, which... The only thing scarier than a boombot is a boombot that got avenged. <laughs> yeah. He's got a lot of burst. Chiny Pants has a lot of burst damage in his hand, too. Which needs to be noted. Coghammer and Blessing of Kings is six. That's nice. Ragnaros. His boombot got rid of the Vitality Totem. Yeah. Pesky Vitality Totem. Oh, man. Still no Death Spite. Yeah, no weapons. That's like, what, what, turn nine? No Death Spite. That's like the best thing a warrior needs, you know? Now it's looking pretty rough for a handsome guy because he's got to fight back. Without any spells, he can go for the Acolyte of Pain and ping onto it. But that uses up five mana. He'd only be left with four. And even if he does pick up a Death Bite, that he's going to take six damage from having to attack in the Tyrion. He has to um, keep into his mind, keep in his head that there's still a secret up. He doesn't know if that's Noble Sacrifice. If it's Avenge and he attacks and it goes on the Doctor Boom, all of a sudden he can't trade into it with his own Doctor Boom. And if, if he kills the Tyrion, he takes five damage next turn from the Ashbringer anyway. He might just uh, slud Sludge bel Belcher and the Frothing Berserker. Yeah. Looks like proactively playing the Acolyte of Pain to try and bait in a larger attack. It's going to be the play. Oh, sacrifices his Dr. Boom. That's 12 damage, plus the Blessing of Kings is 16 damage. He now can go for the 1 in 3. The Ragnaros? Yeah. Here and just hit the Acolyte? Yeah. Not even hit the Acolyte. Just hit the face. Win the game. Yeah, that is 12 damage. Yeah. So Ragnaros would be 1 in 3 to win. Even if it hits one of the minions, you're okay because your opponent then still has to deal with a rag, still has to deal with a Dr. Boom, and still has to worry about the repeated damage of the Ashbringer. The only thing he might be worried about here is how much damage can this Frothy Berserker do. But he'd have to have, if he had exactly Grom Whirlwind, the uh, Frothy Berserker would get buffed up by 10. Exactly Grom Whirlwind would be lethal next turn if he leaves it alive. Oh. Decisions, decisions. Oh. This is the safe play, but okay. it's also the play that I like less. Uh, rag. <sighs> Inner age. So handsome guys in a lot of trouble. Even if he puts uh, Belcher down and Dread Corsair just to <laughs> delay it, the rag still could snipe his face. Yeah. And... Can't really do much with Blessing of Kings, though, just because it doesn't matter on rag. And if he plays such Belcher, he's going to have to attack into something with the Doctor Boom regardless, so... This is exciting. Yeah. I want to see where Ragnaros hits. <laughs> yeah. It might not even matter. Just because Handsome Guy just doesn't have much. He can make patrons and play. He can, like, Grim Patron, Inner Rage, and Sludge Belcher. And just hope that. Uh, put as many targets on the board as possible. And hope that the Rag doesn't hit base. But He's hoping it hits the Acolyte. Juggler's a huge liability here. <laughs> yeah. And also, this might be close. So in order for Shiny Pants to get through this Belcher, he has to attack into it. And he either puts more damage onto his Doctor Boom, which makes this more susceptible to being killed, or he takes more face damage. And if he hits it with his face, he goes down to 11. And there's actually 10 damage on the board if we factor in the ping outside of that. Yeah, so uh, if he drew into a Grom... Yeah. 
it's over for Shiny. Yeah, well, we also have to account the fact that Rag's going to hit something. And if it hits the face, he loses. And if it hits something else, it's just straight up taking damage off the board. So. He might just even want a Cog Hammer here. Yeah. To protect his face. Oh, that's a great target for the Cog Hammer. It's either Juggle Last or he just Hero Power. Uh, juggle's still a little bit risky because he could find a way if he finds a way to trade into the. Uh oh, what is it? Okay, well it hits the higher damage patron, so that was the best target <laughs> other than the face for the actual win. Inner Rage isn't really going to do much. Uh, there's just no way out of this for for a handsome guy. Yeah, it looks like a dead end here. Yeah. Even if he inner rages his acolyte of pain, picks up and execute for Doctor Boom. There's still no way for Handsome Guy to get through the rag to kill the uh, the Powder Shredder and the Knife Juggler. And he can play Dread Corsair after that, but even if he does, it only blocks one attack, and he still would be able to push through with one of those minions. What is he looking for? Battle Rage gets two cards. Can he afford to use the mana for the ping? Yes, he can. So that's going to be three cards now from the Battle Rage. What can he do with three mana? It doesn't seem like anything. And he's like, oh, there's my Death Spite. Huh. Well, Dread Corsair and Unstable Ghoul doesn't do it. Because he could just attack in with the... Yeah, he goes ahead and concedes. Realizes that there's no way out for him. He goes ahead and concedes out of the match. And that means that's Shiny Pants taking game number one. Well, that was a tough game for, uh, you know, handsome guy not getting death spite until, like, t was th what turn was that already? <laughs> it was past turn 10 because he already had 10 mana. It was all of his weapons were in the bottom half of his deck. Yeah. Every single weapon. Even the Fiery War Axe just came really late. Yeah, both Fiery War Axes. And uh, so, Shiny uh, Pants still has the Druid and the Warlock remaining. And Handsome Guy, Druid, Warlock, and Warrior remaining. Still has that Patron Warrior left. Uh, Patron Warrior is going to find two decent matchups with Shiny Pants running Druid and the Zoo Warlock. Um, yeah, Lothar said that um, usually when someone lose, loses with a deck, they continue to still play with that deck. So we might see Handsome Guy use the Patron Warrior again. Yeah. It all depends on your opponent's decks. Because a lot of times uh, w they re a deck because they queued it in the first place because it's good against the most decks of their opponent. So if that's their strategy, uh, by queuing up the deck that has the highest win rate across the entire board um, of decks, then uh, it makes sense that they would queue it again because it's most likely for them to take a win. Uh, but it looks like we are going to jump into the next match. Handsome guy once again, like you said, queuing up that patron warrior. Shiny Pants going to throw out the Zoo Warlock. Yeah, so this could go either way. Zoo versus Patron Warrior. Seems like a pretty good, yeah, 50-50, depending on uh, how they both start out. Oh, finally, the Fiery War Axe. That's really good against the Zoo. Yeah, so is Despite. I think this matchup is a little bit more favored in the Patron Warrior's camp, mm -hmm. uh, just because of the weapons and... As soon as you, rem again, like like Zoo, or like Secret Paladin, Zoo, as soon as you remove their board, even more so, since they don't have as many big threats like Tyrion and Mysterious Challenger and Dr. Boom, um, then they just, it's hard for them to come back in the game. And they're even more susceptible to being shut out of the game by a board full of patrons. Yeah, so what the Zoo, well, what Shiny p Pants needs is for Handsome Guy to not get any patrons for a while. Yeah. Keeping Defender of Argus doesn't seem like a good option. You need consistency of draw because you need to apply pressure early to force the warrior into a position where they have to draw things. And no turn one play. I think he's good. Oh, okay. There's the Flame Imp. Turn too late. Yeah. We will be able to play that, though, uh, alongside the Knife Juggler, most likely. And uh, Unstable Ghoul is actually a really good pickup. 
You don't want to have to use multiple resources to deal with a uh, a haunted creeper. But actually, he's going to have to. Abusive Sergeant trades up nicely into it, but it kills off the Abusive Sergeant. So you're basically just trading a card for a card to put a damage onto your... Or, well, to s spawn Spectral Spiders. Shiny Pants might Knife Juggler plus Abusive Sergeant here. Yeah, he would have to put a damage onto his knife juggler, though. Well, he's just going to wait for it. Yeah. Still no death bite, but Fireworks is still there. Fireworks has become less good against Zoo. Because of Imp Gang. Because of Imp Gang, boss. Uh, and also just, you know, Haunted Creeper and... Um, yeah, pretty much those two cards. Uh, it doesn't match up well. But with an unstable ghoul, with a whirlwind in the hand, it's decent. It's okay. Maybe he's thinking about that right now. Fiery War Axe with Whirlwind. Mm. Uh, Not right now. Yeah. You, you want to wait till, Especially since Whirlwind s gets better, I think. Uh, as, the, as the board gets fuller. Uh, because Warlocks really don't play too much stuff that has more than, like, two health. And... Since we talked about it earlier, how patron having patrons is such an important part of this matchup. Being able to generate them with Whirlwind is a big deal. Creepers. Okay. Yeah. So I imagine he's going to attack in here and preemptively attack into the Haunted Creeper with one damage. But we'll see. I don't know. Actually, just going to go ahead and take this out. So if he preemptively attacks the one damage into the Haunted Creeper. And if he finds a different, no, no, that would, yeah, that wouldn't matter. It would just mean the spectral spiders would spawn one turn quicker. Hmm. So here you have to be really careful with the ordering. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to waste damage by getting things killed off from the unstable ghoul whirlwind before you attack with them. So you deal with the ghoul, and then you put out your. Juggler. Flame Imp and Void Walker, I think, here. Yep. And now, many chances. Uh, well, he guarantees this. And if he doesn't hit this, then he can trade in, still get the Spectral Spiders, uh, and get wow. Juggles to the face. So. The Juggler just was really just wanted to hit that minion. Yeah. You didn't have to break open the creepers, and that's that's cool. All right, handsome guy's in a little bit of an awkward position now because still doesn't have patrons. He does have battle rage, but in order to get value from battle rage, he'd have to play the armor smith plus the whirlwind, and uh, then he wouldn't be removing anything from the board. And you're using a lot of resources just to you know replenish the resources that you used. Um, can't get past the board walker here without the Fire War Axe, so would have to use that. And if he uses Whirlwind, in order to deal with the Knife Juggler, he'd have to execute it off. Could yeah, just this is not a great turn for Handsome Guy. You could just uh, wait a turn. Armor up and wait a turn. You're, you're taking a damage, uh, at least. Um, most likely at least 10. Just battle raging for one card, really trying to find just mm -hmm. something to play. Find a second Fire War Axe, which is going to be good to start taking out the rest of these creatures, but going to take so much damage in between. Yeah, you know that when a c Patron Warrior um, battle rages for, you know, one card only. Yeah, they're desperate. They, they are desperate. Firewolf Alpha yep. seems like a good pickup. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that too. Just to get rid of the armor smith on the board. But the question is, does he tap to find more cards or play the brand bronze beard on the board in tandem with the al the Direwolf Alpha to just sort of apply that pressure? The sort of must remove type deal. And it looks like tap it's gonna be a tap. And the Ruby and Egg doesn't really change much because you can't play it this turn uh, along with the direwolf alpha but 
Ooh. Yeah, he didn't really want to have that, but it's okay. Would you save the abusive? I think I'd save it. Yeah. Just for the patrons. Yeah. So we're going to probably most likely see the Belcher here. Oh, no. He wants to get rid of the creatures. Yeah. Dire wolf. Or you, so you sort of need to start whacking away here uh, before you play the Belcher. Because you don't... If he just plays the Belcher, it just gets traded up so much. And here we go. This is... Uh, He's preparing for the Whirlwind. Yeah. And this is setting up nicely for the Dr. Boom next turn. He's going to have a, a really clean board for Dr. Boom. Got to keep tapping. You got to... Yeah. Make sure you play the Flame Imp before the Bran. Very true. <laughs> Very true. And Shiny Pants putting on a decent amount of pressure, but it's just not going to be enough. It feels like. Uh, Dr. Boom is going to come down. And also picks up Sir Finley, which can be a big deal. Giving up the armor is a risk, but sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a good risk because it allows you to either pick up something that helps control the board uh, like ping or um, or even heal, which can be used sort of similar to armor up to heal you up or to heal your, your minions out of range of of some of the, the zoo's minions. Um, so Healing up your patrons. Yeah. That would be pretty handy. Yeah, to keep throwing them into things. Okay, he wants to use the abusive here to get rid of the Dr. Boom. Yeah, this is a nice, clean, clear. Now, imagine you just use it on the egg. Just cash in now uh, while he can. Put some more pressure on the board. And uh, then you can play Voidwalker as well behind it to try and protect the rest of your minions from the from the Boombot damage. And uh, th once again, a pretty threatening board. Handsome guy would love to see a death spite. There it is. Oh, whoa. But no patrons. Yeah. But Despite is the key that unlocks everything else in this deck. Because Despite, you know, allows you to damage your things to draw more stuff with Battle Rage. Uh, it can damage your Acolyte of Pain and your Armor Smiths to draw cards, gain armor. Yeah, it's amazing how much synergy Despite has with the Warrior decks. Yeah. It is the it is the strongest card that Warrior has at its disposal. I know a lot of Warrior players would be very sad to see it go once the standard rolls around. Yeah, I'm sure they're gonna have something to replace it. Steady shot. I would have liked to see his choices there to where he goes for steady shot. And four damage to the wow. face! Wow! <laughs> so steady shot just might have been the right choice. Because he's handsome guy is like a a few draws away from just winning, or even just a few turns away from winning. He realizes that this is going to be a race, most likely, and Steady Shot means when both hero powers are damaging the Warlock, it's not good for the Warlock. I think Shiny Pants has to possibly implosion the bomb here so he doesn't have more damage to his face from the bomb. Yeah. Or he should definitely put the egg out first. So it has a chance to break the egg. Yeah. So Shiny Pants realizing that if Grom is in the hand, he dies to it regardless. So tapping is definitely the right play. Even with Steady Shot, he, he needs to sort of find the damage to close out the game before Handsome Guy finds the damage to close out the game. Yeah. Implosion is a look not the greatest this turn just because the Death Bite is... Uh, has both charges left. Ooh, leaving up both minions. Where's this boom about damage? Go? To the face! <gasps> Three again! <laughs> they one, all want to go face. One damage. An inner rage. Battle rage can pick up something else. He could hit, use his weapon to hit the imp gang and... I think that weapon's going face. Yeah, that... That too. I was just thinking for Battle Rage if the 1-3 could hit the little imp. 
Yeah, well, the, if he if, wants to draw. If you're attacking anything with the Despite, your 1 3 is getting damage regardless. So he can Battle Rage for 2 here. You put him on a 2 turn clock regardless. Because either way, you're going to Steady Shot this turn. Ooh, he might not Steady Shot. Yeah, I think not even Battle Raging and just playing Sludge Belcher to play safe and using Steady Shot. Shiny Pants can't you're even right, tap. You're right, this is better. Because now, oh wow, he just has. Can, can this do it for Shiny Pants? This Enhanced Soul Mechano with a power overwhelming. No, there's just no way. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so Enhanced Soul Mechano, he would have to get Wind Fury on all three targets and roll at least a three on Implosion. And he has Brand. <gasps> oh my gosh. This is probably it. Wait. <laughs> 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 I don't. I. If he rolled a three, it would have been game. Oh, right? If he had rolled a three, it would have been game. Because then he could have attacked it with the Imp Gang boss, brand twice. Is it. S <laughs> it's still game, because he has the Wind Fury. Exactly <gasps> 12. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wh what? And he found it. He he figured it out. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. And that's Shiny Pants with a crazy outcome. That's the only draw in the entire deck. Even Owl <sighs> wouldn't have got wouldn't have gotten him lethal in that situation. Did you see that? Yeah. Even I, I was thinking, wait, I think he messed up here. But then no, he had it. Yeah. Yeah. That was so close. That was really close. Yeah, no matter. Yeah, he, that was guaranteed lethal. So that was a really good spot by him. And Handsome Guy was like, what? Yeah, to, to not panic after seeing the uh, implosion roll for two, uh, keeping a calm head, realizing that using the power of a woman on the strongest creature wasn't the right play, and trading that in. Uh, wow, that was just uh, uh, really well spotted. And Shiny Pants now is one game away from moving on. Good job on both ends, really. Yeah. And this is the round of four. I believe. So this is the winner's bracket round of four. So a two-point lead for Shiny Pants. Can yeah. he make it a 3-0, or can Handsome Guy crawl his way back? Well, Shiny Pants only has Druid left. And as we all know, Druid can pull out some pretty crazy wins. In very many situations. I'd say his chances of winning this series are very good uh, with having Druid as his last remaining deck. Handsome Guy has his own Druid, plus a Patient Warrior, uh, plus a Warlock, which uh, I believe was Zoo. I like this. For the possibly the final match between them, it's like, I'm going to play my Druid against your Druid. Yeah. And right off the bat, it looks like Shiny, Shiny Pants, Pants. Has, has gotten the better of the curves here. Shiny Pants, I like your RNG, my friend. <laughs> 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 well, well, Handsome Guy gets Living Roots, too. Yeah. Both players' hands would be made t ten times better by a wild growth here. Um, Shave next Ramus would be a little awkward for Shiny Pants regardless, but, you know, just matching the Living Roots... No innervates, no wild growths for each end. Is he going to draw or just hero power? Yeah, I like the hero power here better. Save the wrath. Oh, it doesn't want to kill it. Yeah, I don't think there's really any reason to. You know your opponent's not going to like swipe to clear two living roots. So you, you want to be make your opponent be the one to trade. You don't want to miss that one damage, so... It makes sense. And Shiny Pants, I think there was an argument last turn for using the Wrath for one. Because as, as far as it goes right now, he doesn't have a turn four play. Um, his turn four play now is pretty much he's tunneled on just Wrath plus Hero Power. And it might work out for the better just because, you know, four, turn four plays for Druid Mirrors are usually either Keeper of the Growth or uh, Power sure. Shredder, which Wrath plus Hero Power does decently against both of those. Now he's a, a swipe for maybe a turn four. But yeah. I don't think he'll... We'll see if he'll be swiping anything. Or if he gets a Shredder. It's 
actually going to pick up. Oh, Shredder is the best draw in the deck for Handsome Guy there. Maybe an Innervate, but Shredder just fills out the curve quite nicely. And now holding on to the Wrath ends up being a pretty good choice for Shiny Pants. And if a one health creature comes out of this pile to Shredder. <laughs> it will be perfect. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's also pretty good if he wants to kill it with his Nax. Yeah. Uh, uh. It's really tough decision to make because you expose your Shade of Naxxramas, which is so important in this matchup because if you get your Shade out first, it, it trades up. And by exposing your Shade... Okay. Yeah. At least one more turn, I think he's going to wait. Just because there's not really too, many, too much that can punish him right now. Jewel of the Claw would definitely be a punish um, for the next turn. Because then all of a sudden it would be a 6-6 six, six taunt with the damage buff. I think he's, we're going to... Hmm. He has options here. He has uh, the Druid of the Claw. Or Swipe. But I, I think the Druid of the Claw is better here. I yeah. Mean, Ah. And then just get rid of the totem. I'm leaning towards the Lothab. If you you can Lothab and, and that Lothab sort of protects your shade, and then you can trade off into the uh, the flame tongue totem. That's true, also. And tough call. Which five drop do you want to use? Yeah. Uh, both of the cards have a lot of flexibility. Lothab can be used later on to block to protect a bigger board, or block combo. But Druid of the Claw can also be used to like supplement a Savage Roar or uh, protect another creature that you have with Taunt. Um, you could even charge, but yeah, I like the yeah. the bear. Yeah. Now this is <laughs> this is why having the shade and having it first as the Druid in this matchup. so important. <laughs> yeah. Just it's because now if he plays Druid of the Claw, he has a... He could just trade into it pretty easily. This is a really good swipe. It's an okay swipe. Yeah, it's pretty good. The only thing is that it would leave his shade at one health. Right? Yeah, because he'd Actually, swipe the Keeper of the Grove. He doesn't need to. Yeah, he could just hit hit it with his um, shade hero power and just drop his keeper of the grove. Yeah. And then his bear can trade into the handsome guy's keeper of the grove. Yeah. Oh, well, he's going. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's going a different way. He wants to keep the his shade healthy. He'd rather mm. keep his shade healthy than keep his druid of the claw healthy. Just because the shade can gain value over time, whereas the druid of the claw doesn't. Yeah, that's that's better. He's like really playing around Hi handsome guy's swipe also. Yeah. Wow, so handsome guy is on the back foot and in Druid versus Druid matches, which is all about control of the board, being on the back foot's not where you want to be. Yeah, it's like you're just like clearing the board and that's your whole turn. Yeah. That's not it's not what you want. You're waiting to lose. And Shiny Pants has the the, the best draw on turn seven. And Innervate as well. He's got a lot of damage leading in the next turn. If Ancient of Lore is played to draw, going to the next turn, Shiny Pants will have 7, uh, plus Savage Roar would add 6, 13, uh, plus Swipe uh, would be 17. And he doesn't have, he'd have uh, a total of 10 mana here. So he would have 3 extra mana to squeeze something else out, but... Yeah, he can't kill him. Not not just yet. I'm leaning towards double swipe. Swipe Ancient of Lore, swipe face. Ooh, he wants to go for the Savage? Well, he could, he could actually... Oh. Did I count that right? It's, yeah. It's not, it's not quite there yet. Okay. Well, Lothab will block some spells. So next turn, he can double swipe, Innervate Hero Power. And if any creature survive on the board, even just double swipe will allow him to push through, so... Th yeah, that's true, too. Getting the value from the Savage Roar while he can is pretty good. And I think that is going to be it. Yeah. 
No hero powers used, so double swipe for Shiny Pants. Shiny Pants plan worked out in the end. All right. Well, that's going to be Shiny Pants advancing even further that into the winner's three bracket. That was a 3-0. Yeah. A little bit of a change of pace from the rest of the games we saw today. And Handsome Guy's not out. Uh, that was a, a winner's bracket match. So Handsome Guy will now fall to the... Um, to the loser's bracket. He'll be pretty far up there, but he'll still have to play a couple additional matches if he wants to make it to the finals, uh, which can be, which can wear on you after, you know, a long weekend. This is day three. Yeah, this is day three. And, but it's the final, you know, it's, it's the stretch. Nearly, yeah, it's nearly there. We're going to yeah. find our top, our winner and our, uh, how many prizes are there? Top four? Uh, top four. Uh, there also is a little bit of Hearthstone Championship Tour points that goes to the top eight. So top eight gets you Championship tour points, top four gets you prize money. That's uh, pretty sweet. Yeah. So, um, yeah, handsome guy will have to fight his way up for the lower bracket. Shiny Pants moves on to the winner's semifinals, which is pretty impressive. We've actually seen Shiny Pants featured on the stream quite a bit now, and uh, he's tearing his way through this tournament. So, um, Good job, Shiny Pants. Good job, Shiny Pants. Maybe we can <laughs> actually get him some, some Shiny Pants. We'll make sure when he, you know, if he gets top four and yeah. he gets a crown – I hope he wears his shiny pants then. Yeah, twenty five hundred dollars is first prize. Uh, if he wins, we're just gonna take the luxury of taking that twenty five dollars and going and buying him the shiniest pants that twenty five hundred dollars can buy. <laughs> You're welcome, shiny pants. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna do it for that match. Uh, we are gonna head to a lower bracket match next, but we are gonna take a quick break before we do that. But guys, don't go anywhere. The conclusion and the. F the uh, winner's bracket semifinals, lose bracket semifinals are still to come today, so don't go anywhere. More C